Welcome to a new and fresh business breakthrough insight session where I'll be bringing you tips, strategies, frameworks, and insights designed to improve your business and change your life. I'm Coach Steve Daly, your host. I'm a proud pioneer in the business coaching industry and a zealous advocate for entrepreneur success and freedom. So you are in exactly the right place. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the subscribe button below. And if you're on our website watching this, follow the link on this page to subscribe to our blog. And in either case, receive regular and relevant insights just like these in the future. So with that, let's get you launched to an exciting business breakthrough. All right. Okay. Well, we are officially kicking off our session here today on January 20th and uh, kicking into a new year of with the intention for business breakthrough. Now, I don't know about you, but every time the calendar turns to a new January, um, I am compelled to set big, as they call it, big, hairy, audacious goals. The, the, the whole uh, society uh, permission, if you will, that we've embedded in our marketplace to, uh, to really start fresh, start a new chapter, think big, think ahead, uh, for the year ahead, I think is awesome. The challenge is, of course, and we've all been there, every single one of us, uh, is, is taking action and implementing the things that we have declared there at the beginning of the year. And so these sessions are designed to help you identify, guide your um, outlook, if you will, to identify the places where you think you can have the, uh, create the biggest impact in your business. Um, we have a variety of industries represented here, whether you're on the call or you're listening. And, and uh, I want you to know that everything that I'm going to be delivering in these sessions applies across any industry. You may have to uh, ask me for some specific direction on application if you have a question about that. But I promise this is absolutely best practices uh, material here. Today, we're going to talk about how to turn every client into a raving fan and eliminate your ad budget at the same time. Now, for context, um, I want you to know that uh, I'm not against advertising per se, but I am against entrepreneurs and small business people spending money unnecessarily hoping that if they advertise, people will come because that's just like the old field of dreams things. If you build it, they will come. If you advertise, they will come is a false statement. You do have to be noisy about your business. You do have to, and last time, if you didn't uh, attend, I recommend you go back to um, uh, the session we did there where I introduced four strategies for client attraction. Uh, you do have to get noisy about your business, but if you notice, uh, I offered in that session a ton, a lot of different uh, strategies, a lot of different uh, tactics and strategies. And there was one mention of ads uh, because there's so much that we can do. Um, uh, back in the day before the internet, and some of you were building your business back then, you know, if you had a good business card and a good pitch or elevator pitch, you, you won business. And it, that hasn't changed. Uh, you do need a website today, I'll, I'll confess, but uh, man, uh, so much to do. But where we're going to focus today is on the clients that you're already serving. That is your best and most leveraged access, rapid pass access to um, uh, uh, new clients. But we want to create raving fans first, and then we'll eliminate your ad budget. So. The, the core of the today's message is around the notion of client delight. And this is a principle. It's inarguable as much as gravity is basically something we just live with. The secret to winning customers, keeping customers, and creating referrals is to make client delight a mission. You can do a lot of other things in your business, but if you don't focus on just blowing your clients away, in the form, fashion, and, and consistent, persistent, consistent and persistent delivery of your promise, then you're missing the boat. We all know this. 
uh, as a as a business fundamental, it's a lot less expensive to keep a customer than it is to find a customer. And um, if you're not on mute, I recommend you you hit that button, uh, and and I will definitely open up the uh, the discussion here. Uh, open, encourage you to take you off mute here later. Uh, but let me get some lay some principles down. So as I was saying, uh, your um, Current clients that you're serving, clients, customers, I use those terms interchangeably, uh, are a goldmine for creating new client attraction. But first, we have to establish client delight. So there's three principles at play here. Your brand makes a promise, and your promise makes your brand. So whether you intend it or not, when you launch a website, when you talk to somebody about what you do, when you, whatever you got printed on your business card, those elements are promises stated. Every single place that you show up, what comes out of your mouth implies a promise for how you can change a person's life or business in a positive way. If they lean into it, then your, your promise and the, the, the uh, uh, continuity between what you've implied and what you deliver actually frames your brand. So we've all seen businesses come and go in marketplaces that we, that we participate in and or serve. And those that fail are the ones that, that fail to deliver their promise and their brand basically gets erased in the mind of people that might know about them. Next principle is whether customers are happy or not is a reflection of how well you've delivered your promise. And you, here you'll discover in a minute, you, you know, there's a baseline level of expectation that every customer or client comes to you with, and that has to be honored or they'll be unhappy. Simple as that. When somebody comes to you, if you've dealt with, and if you've been in business for longer than about a month, you probably have had a client or a customer that's come to you and say, you know, uh, you know, what about this? What about that? Or, you, you know, I thought this and I thought that. And, and you, you, you might receive that as a difficult customer, maybe, but it, regardless of whether they're your ideal client or not, it's really connected to whether you delivered your, your promise. And finally, as I've already sort of uh, talked about, raving fans come from extreme over-delivery of your promise. And I'm going to show you some really cool ways to do that. Uh, there's an author, if you haven't run across him, he's absolutely brilliant, Scott McCain. And he wrote the book, Iconic, How Organizations and Leaders, um, well, you can read the title there, uh, it's, it's about creating ultimate distinction in the marketplace. And he's got a brilliant continuum that we should all aspire to. Uh, we all start at, at some level being the same, but we should be as aspiring to be different. But just being different is in, in, in today's marketplace, competitive marketplace as it is, uh, especially different isn't enough. We have to not only become different, but also distinct. And he defines it in the book, but my summary here for this purpose is distinct is, is the first step in becoming a category of one versus one in a category of many. You, when you're starting at the same, you're just one in a category of many. Different is is basically moving you to the to the question of okay, how am I going to be kind of moving to the upper crust? But distinct is now category defining, and uh, he encourages and has a framework for becoming iconic, which is basically what people talk about. So uh, let's name some iconic brands: Home Depot, Starbucks, Southwest Airlines, Ne. Um, uh, Oh, shoot, uh, not Neiman Marcus. What's the uh, uh, high dollar uh, uh, clothing store? You know them. Uh, Nordstrom's. Bar Nordstrom's, there you go. Thank you. Um, these are iconic brands because people talk to them, use them as a reference point. 
uh, they're category defining. So I strongly recommend you pick that book up. Now, um, what we're going to uh, launch into here in a second is creating a client delight agenda. Last time in our in the session last, and again, you'll get the link to the uh, page that has these if you didn't get a chance to, to participate live. I introduced this framework among many uh, to basically help you define who your ideal customer was. And I want to lay down here that, that I am not advising. In fact, I'm, what would I say? What I am advising is don't invest in client delight for customers you really are, don't identify as ideal. What's an ideal client? You love the problem that they have because you, you're equipped to fix it and it's, it just lights you up to, uh, uh, to see the problem solved. They love the solution that you're branding to solve their problem. They become loyal because they've been served well and then they refer. I'm going to show you some very specific strategies today for how we uh, basically address the loyalty and referral generation aspect of this. There's another book I want to point you to. If you ever ran across this cat, Mike Michalowicz, you can, if you can spell his name, you can just Google it. If you, if you can't spell his name, then go to Motorbike Mike. That was his uh, nickname in high school. By the way, just quick sidebar, go to hit when you go to his website up in the very, very top. He's a he's a best selling author, I think, seven times over up at the very top. Um, he makes fun of his name. It's hilarious. You just click this button uh, at the very top and it cycles through <laughs> several hilarious versions of, uh, of of teasing his name. It's a beautiful branding uh, tactic. Now, one of his first books, uh, one of the, the first, but one of his first ones is this one, The Pumpkin Plan, and it lays out a very, very simple but profound uh, strategy for how to grow the right type of customers. How do you identify them? I've already given you some big fat uh, guidance on that, but he's, he, he colors it in a bit. Uh, how to identify your ideal client and how to grow them, and he uses a wonderful uh, analogy that he learned when he uh, discovered how uh, the guys that sell pumpkins make the biggest pumpkin in the patch. <laughs> so that is a teaser. If you haven't read the book, uh, you really need to pick that up. It will amplify a lot of things we're going to talk about today. All right, this is the master framework I want to I want to really spend some time on for our discussion today. Uh, as I invite every time, uh, please do take some notes. Anything that strikes you as, uh, 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 you know, something you want to remember, an epiphany or whatever, write some things down and then go back to your notes when you're when we're done here and highlight or put a star next to the things that you're going to take action on. Knowledge is as valuable as the degree to which it's applied, period. And so uh, take notes on all this. I'm entered, and then of course you can take screenshots. You'll be able to get the recording, as I said earlier, uh, if you want to do it that way. But here's the client, my client delight framework: raving, creating raving fans through extreme over delivery of your promise throughout the client journey. Now that's underscored for a reason. We'll we'll spend some more time on that notion here in a second. But no matter. When, where your clients are in their journey of, or their experience with you, uh, we need to be mindful of whether or not they're delighted or not. And it really is a yes, no sort of a, a proposition here. And so as you're seeing, let's focus on the pyramid here at first. Uh, as you climb the, from the foundation to the pinnacle, we're building trust we're reinforcing and building differentiation. At the very bottom is satisfying the customer, which is delivering our promise. I'll go into detail on all these. Surprising is taking the satisfaction to the next level by introducing ways to serve them that they weren't expecting. Just imagine what is the definition of a surprise. Whoa, I wasn't looking for that. Boom, you just got surprised. We do that in a positive way through the client journey. If we do that well enough and consistently enough, then we end up voiding 
comparison. This is that breakthrough that I talked about uh, from different to distinct, the Scott McCain talks about, where we suddenly start finding ourselves in a place where nobody can think of anybody else in our category of business that is similar to us. They do something like you, but you do it better. We do something that nobody else does, even though a lot of people do similarly the things that we do. And if you do that consistently and over time and predictably, then you automate advocacy, meaning people can't help but talk about you. People can't wait to talk about you, your brand, the experience that they had. It's a nirvana, a, a, a pinnacle, I'll use that term again, of achievement in establishing a brand. And it's absolutely achievable. And I'll give you some anecdotes and some examples as I go along. So over here on the upper left, you'll see number one, satisfy. So as mentioned a minute ago, you have implied and even stated a promise on your website in the way that you talk through, some, through the sales conversation, however, whatever form that, that takes in your business. And uh, throughout that process, the client is seeing and hearing uh, uh, what is compelling them to spend money with you. Uh, some of you have heard me say this, if you're a client or former client, for sure. You know, uh, we are in the business, all of us, of transformation. People come to us because they're in a point of pain, discomfort, incompleteness, whatever, and they know it. They're uncomfortable with it and they vision, that's point A, and they vision a point B, which is that problem solved, that state renewed, that situation uh, uh, at, a, at, at a completely new state. And the, in the little, if you draw an area, if you want to take notes on this, point A, point B, is state, should state, uh, uh, current state, desired state, however you want to say it, and the, and the line between those two points is transformation. And what people pay us money for is transformation. Many business owners get this wrong. They think, many people think that people pay us to have the B or the should state or the end state. No, that's their experience. What, what we do and what we deliver and what they give us money for is the transformation. And if we're smart, we will guide them with us through that transformation. So when you're stating your promise, their, their base point for satisfaction is the degree to which they believe or trust that you can take them through that transformation journey. When you, you either deliver it or you don't, you either deliver your promise or you don't. And that's that they're either going to be happy or they're not because of the expectation that you created by stating your promise. So satisfaction starts with delivery of the promise. One of the things that is um, uh, that makes big brands and a commonly used um, uh, analogy is McDonald's. As far as I know, I haven't been to a McDonald's uh, uh, outside the United States, but I understand that this experience is similar. But I do know this in the in, and I don't go to McDonald's often, if ever. But what I know is if I walked into a McDonald's today, I would have exactly, I would be able to predict that the experience that I would get there is very similar, if not exactly the same, to what to to when I used to go there on a on a, every chance I got when I was in high school and college. So being predictable is part of satisfaction. If you surprise in a negative way in the earliest stages of a relationship, client relationship, then you blow up uh, client delight un un unintentionally right away. Another level or another layer of, of, of delivering satisfaction is being respectful. Uh, all of us in business probably have a little bit of sensitivity to customer service delivery in, in, in when we're consumers, when we're out in the marketplace. I hate being placed on hold. I don't like it when I have to stand in line. I don't like it when somebody is bored. I, I've got, I called uh, somebody the other day 
I won't name the name of the company. They're actually a pretty good brand, but they sometimes, and the, and, and the person just was not into it. And, and uh, I could tell it right out of the gate. And I said, sounds like you had a bad day. Uh, and she perked up immediately, apologized and said, yeah, we've had a lot of calls today. Went to the post office the other day and the lady literally scolded me because I, she couldn't read my writing on the, on the little label. You know, I just didn't feel respected. You know, I'm, there's a difference between I can't even read that and saying, I'm sorry, sir, uh, I'm, I'm having trouble here. Uh, it, probably I just need to adjust my bifocal prescription here. But what's that letter right there? Way different. So demonstrate respect. And that's at the base level. Notice, don't step over this. This is part of satisfaction. Expressing appreciation. We all know how to say thank you. Oftentimes businesses skip over that. The businesses that we frequent, that we where we are satisfied in their service, make us feel like that we're appreciated. And finally, at the base level of satisfaction is what I call experience checks. How did we do for you today? Was there anything else I could have done to make this experience better for you? I'm not a huge fan of, of after service surveys. We all get them. Uh, I think if you can make a one or two question thing that makes it super easy, that may be okay. Um, but uh, how, how often do you really go and fill, you know, they, they circle the thing on your little receipt and say, go to the, go online and fill out our survey. I never do that rarely, and unless I'm mad about what just happened. Um, and so embedding though, simple, easy, and authentic, uh, 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 interested query into how you've done periodically through the journey, the client's journey is part of the base level of satisfaction. Communicating to your client that you care what their experience is and whether or not they're being satisfied. All right, we're gonna move over to number two up in the upper right here, surprise. So very simply, this, is, this isn't rocket science. We look for ways to do more than was expected. In other words, uh, finding ways to basically over deliver um, the, um, uh, the, the, the promises that, that we made. I just was clicking in on chat here. Thank you for your comments. Um, but look, you're not going to surprise them with any meaning in any meaningful way without the surprise being relevant to what they were expecting in this uh, in the earliest stages when we were talking about our promise. So when you're thinking of what can I surprise my client with, make sure that it's relevant in the context of what they were expecting. So if they are expecting one hour and you give them an extra 15 minutes, that's a surprise and it's directly relevant to what they had hoped for. But it also has to be personal. Your surprises need to be personal. Now, this is as simple as using their name. Uh, when, you, when you say, uh, Ms. Smith, Mr. Jones, um, uh, I thought of you, uh, I knew you were coming in today, you know, um, Gosh, uh, let's just use, so uh, I've got a massage delightfully scheduled for next week. Um, the, my, one of the things I like besides, the, I love massages, besides the terrific way that she treats me uh, in the massage, the expectation that I have, she also always seems to have some little something that uh, she wants to give me, to hand me. Uh, to uh, to demonstrate her appreciation for me being there. Uh, the other day, I got a um, uh, a little a soap thing, a little uh, yeah, a little soap, a bar of soap, a little miniature thing. Thought of you. Um, it was personal. It was sort of connected to the whole massage experience. You know, most of us go home, take a shower, and, and wipe off all the massage oil and all that stuff. But you know, it's just very thoughtful, and it was a surprise. Um, just like I'm doing now with that example, you want to make sure that the surprises give them something to talk about. Now, this feeds into other stages that I'll get to here in a second. But um, 
a, a big surprise uh, is uh, even more powerful for your business and your relationship with the client if it's something that they can talk about or even better show people, uh, other people. I also have a principle or, a, or a, I guess a, a, a paradigm here that I call predictive transparency. One of the things that um, uh, dilutes or even eliminates client delight is a very fundamental thing that happens in all human experience called uncertainty. Think about yourself. When you walk into a place and you don't know where to go to get what you're looking for, it's frustrating and immediately it moves the, the needle away from uh, your delight. If you walk in and you know, and you can see there's signage or there's somebody that's helpful there, or uh, you know, when I work with my architects, for example, we create a client roadmap. Um, uh, when you, uh, uh, and I'd work with all, all form, all businesses in creating an onboarding strategy for clients. You don't need to talk about it in your promise, but when you, reveal it as a surprise. Here's what it's going to look like for you to, for, here's what your transformation literally is going to look like. That's what I call predictive, pre predictive transparency, helping being very transparent about what they can predict about their experience. And that is a terrific surprise. Now, some of us are in uh, businesses where it's, uh, there's a, you know, my business for sure is organic I'm not going to be able to predict precisely what um, a client's experience is going to be and how fast it's going to happen. But what I can predict, because I've done this for a, a bit, uh, is I can predict stages of new insight, new transformation, new uh, uh, stages of, of success. And it, you know, I can typically lay out three, four, five different benchmarks that they can look forward to. And that relaxes that uncertainty dramatically. Uh, I'll use my own practice as, a, as an example again. Uh, people, when they engage me, know that uh, I've got basically no boundaries on how often and how uh, frequent we communicate. I am just a strong and somewhat rebellious advocate of being a partner with my clients. And so I make a big deal about that. It's not part of the, uh, it's not stated loudly in the promise making that I do, but when they get started with me, we always talk about, look, let me reinforce. And then I consistently reinforce that all the way through. That's a form of predictive transparency. Down here in the lower left, avoiding comparison. This was when it really gets fun. So we start to break out, as I said, from different to distinct here. When I was uh, back in the, uh, the way I joke about is back in the dinosaur days, I was a competitive swimming coach. I worked with kids that were aspiring to, to uh, go to national and international levels of competition. And one of the things, one of the principles, if you've ever been a swimmer or an athlete uh, in, in, in things like track and field, et cetera, you may be familiar with the term negative split. And basically what that means is you go out as strong as you can in the first part of your race, uh, but then you uh, come back, you come home, as we call it, faster than you went out. You negative split. The split on the back half is faster than the split on the first half. Well, in, in my coaching experience, I developed a philosophy that I wanted to negative split every swim. I wanted the kids to negative split every swim, every set, every practice, every season. In other words, the back half of every single thing we did, every swim in a practice, every set of, of number of swims, every practice itself and the whole season itself, I wanted the back half to be stronger than the first half. I've applied that to my business and, and, and the way I teach people how to treat people or serve people. And let me tell you, you will immediately move yourself to a distinctive category when, you're, when the client experience is even better on the end 
than it was at the beginning because that's 180 degrees from what everybody else does. Think about it. When you when 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 you buy that new car or you walk into the you know the, the you know whatever it is the retail place that you buy from or the consultation that you you know the consultation with your CFO or the, your uh, CPA or uh, your attorney even there's a lot of feel good right there at the beginning a lot of synergy you know I'm I'm here to solve your problem you've got a problem I'm going to make it happen for you and the client feels okay great and then there's this unfortunate and predictable uh, sink into business as usual. Well, if you can flip that curve to a negative split, people will absolutely fall in love with you. They'll feel it. And we want to invest money to reward them. And we want to invest time to appreciate them. Money to reward them and time to appreciate them. Um, I mentioned in another session the uh, the application of the of um, uh, Gary Chapman's five love languages. That's a book about relationship, but I tell you what, it absolutely relationship applies in business. Uh, make no mistake, and um, uh, everyone loves to feel appreciated. Now they all have all of us are wired differently. Now there's appreciation through words. There's appreciation through time. Uh, acts of service, gifts, uh, um, uh, I'm missing one of them, but uh, go back and reference that book and, and get creative about how you express appreciation to the people that you serve. And it usually involves time, a little extra time, a little moment. You know, let's just look, and I'm, I'm, I'm using a lot of retail comparatives here. I know most of us are not in retail business. But wouldn't it be nice if at the end of a, let's just say we go to the grocery store and uh, rather than the checkout lady handing us the ticket for how much we spent, thank you, have a nice day, um, uh, and then turning immediately to the next customer, I understand throughput's part of their business model, but what, wouldn't it be great if just a little, another 10 seconds, she knows my name, it was on my card, it was in the little thing that I filled out, you know, punched in for my loyalty bonus, whatever thing they got going on. Wouldn't it be awesome if she said, Mr. Daly, it was a pleasure serving to, serving to you today, serving you today, and reached out and shook my hand. I know I'm not COVID friendly in, in, in suggesting that, but wouldn't it be amazing? Wouldn't that put a smile on your face? Hope you have a, and then said, hope you have a great day. Look me in the eye. That is a 10 second investment in voiding comparison. Money, uh, you know, uh, businesses do this all the time, but let's get creative. You know, um, uh, going back to the grocery store, I love my grocery store that lets me add up points that I can cash in at the, at the gas pump. But um, it's kind of the same. It would be perhaps in the surprise category, um, over time, it becomes it, it sinks into the satisfied category. But if if um, uh, let's say again, I, this crazy idea, just you know, as an example, let's say the cashier says, um, uh, "Mr. Daly, pleasure to serve you today. Uh, I really hope you have a great day." By the way, I notice that you're close. You're just just a few points away from the next level on the gas pump here. Let me give you a dollar to. Um, uh, to, to use at the pump. Uh, all of a sudden, I, I'm not going anywhere else to go to get groceries. I mean, the lady just gave me money. Um, so money as a reward for the client's interest, participation, and, 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 uh, and, and your delight. Remember, we're back here loving, loving their problem. Uh, she's expressing appreciation for loving my problem, solving my problem by handing me money, I'm all in. I want to encourage you, of course, with all these things to think out of the box, but this particular category requires that. And finally, we want to look for things to provide additional service that they would gladly pay for, but that they don't have to. Finally, and quickly here before we get into questions, comments, epiphanies, et cetera, automating advocacy 
is simply making them feel like they're part of something beyond the experience. So every client has a journey and they, they not only feel good the closer they get to the destination intended, but if they also feel like they become part of a club, part of a team, part of a community, then all of a sudden you are uh, embracing them as your family. You help people feel, you know, think about this. How do people feel like family around you? You know something about them outside the context of the fact that they, you know, that they're related to you. You know about their kids, you know, when they last got married, you know, when their birthday's coming up, you know what color they like, you know, whether they like chocolate chips versus raisins in their cookies. There's a lot of little things that you can learn about people if you take the time along the journey and then making sure that they know that. So wouldn't it be amazing? Let's just use the, the, the oatmeal cookie thing. I think I confessed in an earlier session. I love oatmeal cookies. That's not a request. I'm just telling you that. I love oatmeal cookies. I happen to like raisins in my oatmeal cookies better than chocolate chip. If you knew that and you were serving me and you sent me a, a baker's dozen of chocolate chip I have uh, oatmeal raisin cookies with, with raisins in it, with my name on it. I love you for life. I feel like I'm part of your family. I actually had the, a, a podcast guest send me a, a box. I don't know where he got it. I keep meaning to ask him. A wooden box that had my name on it. He sent it to me as appreciation for interviewing me on the podcast. Talk about spending money without uh, and for something I'd gladly pay for. And inside of it, yes, was some cookies. Now, they weren't, sadly, oatmeal raisin cookies. But okay, they were still cookies. But a box with my name on it. Holy cow. Now I'm like connected to the guy. So look for ways to learn about your clients in a way that you can make them feel like family. That will make it easy for them to talk about you. And, um, uh, and they will, they absolutely will consider naming something after them. Um, I've had a number of businesses where I encourage them to, um, to, uh, pull out one of their most raving fans, uh, assign the name of that, that, uh, client to a, a one of the versions of their service. This is the Bob Jones version of, or this is the this is our Bob Jones package. We call it Bob Jones because this is the first person we we uh, delivered it to, and he just thinks it's amazing. You tell Bob Jones you've named one of your services after him. Is he going to talk about you? Yep. Is he going to come back always? Uh, is he going to uh, you know kind of be proud about the you know his participation and what's going on there? Feel like he's part of something bigger? Absolutely. And finally, uh, think about ways you can deliver beyond your category. Real quick example of a client that I, I walked, I, I helped uh, work through this whole continuum. It took us about a year to, to, to get all the uh, stuff in place. His uh, administrative assistant was actually, he gave her the title of uh, Director of Client Delight. Uh, she manages all of this for him. And today he does, he spends zero dollars on advertising. He's making more money than he's ever made. His gross top line revenue is, is higher than he's ever made. His personal income is, uh, has topped now $600,000 in a year. Uh, he's an architect. He, um, uh, uh, and the phone rings, he's got an eight month waiting list. Uh, for clients that have heard about him, his phone rings every single day, no advertising, with new prospects. He's got an eight-month waiting list uh, for clients that are willing to wait for his brand to service. One of the things that we did, only one, I'll give you an example, is we I challenged him to come up with something to, to do it uh, during the holiday season. Um, for all the clients that he served during the season, he found a guy that could paint uh, on a big uh, Christmas globe, Christmas tree globe, a rendering of the home that he's designed, that he worked on for that client. Now, some clients were still in design phase. Some clients had moved in. Didn't matter. But he gave his all the clients he served 
a Christmas tree ornament big with their name on it and a rendering of their house that he's designing. And uh, he told me when he uh, when he launched that the next two months, he get uh, he got he started getting calls because people, his clients had shown their neighbors and people uh, that uh, that they knew um, uh, this amazing uh, work of art. So I'm going to encourage you to come off a of mute as appropriate to give me any comments, questions, new commitments that you're making, epiphanies. If there's anything that I can amplify or uh, uh, cover, again, I know I've gone through this very fast. Um, feel free to uh, to holler out. So anything, um, let me just check the chat here. Uh, well, somebody's physical touch. That's it. That's what I miss. Thank you. <laughs> On the five languages. That's the handshake, right? A hug. Love it. Hey, coach. Yeah, DB. Shoot. Hey, hey, I, I just have to tell you that was brilliant. Uh, your brand <laughs> makes the promise and the promise makes the brand. Brilliant. Thank you. That really, really resonated. And that the, the idea of the last one you shared, the idea of naming um, like a product or service after a customer. Isn't that is, fun? Is, that's, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's, I mean, a, along with the other great tips and, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, yeah, Thanks. appreciate that, buddy. And, and, and as I said at the top, uh, you know, any of these things that you pick up that you, that strike you Hello. as well. That's cool. Uh, put a little star, highlight it in your notes, and 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 decide you're going to do something about it. That's that's where the the real fun begins. Absolutely. Thank. You. All right. Anybody else? Michelle. Yes. Yes. Sure. Thank no, you for being I, here. Great to see you. Yeah. I know. I'm glad I got past my senior moment. I'm like, why do I have a call with Steve? We just talked the other day. Oh, right. <laughs> um, signed up but, for something. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, no, I love all that. That's really, really um, very insightful. And I'm, you know, I'm looking across the landscape of what I do for my clients and one of the, the fun things that I started doing last year is I, I send all of my new clients, um, I call it an inspiration box. So they get a box with um, a five minute journal and one of my my brain squeezy things. OK, cool. Um, a copy of my book. And um, because I take folks through a 90 day program, I, I give them a really nice cross pen as well so they can write cool. in their journal. Cool. So um just little things like that because I had example. one of my coaches did that for me. And I was like, Oh, that's so nice. I got a surprise great. in the mail. I love surprises. So um, that's a great. Yeah, uh, great. Uh, thank you for that. That's a great illustration. You're definitely in the, in the surprise category and, and, and on, uh, and I'll, I would say uh, uh, avoiding comparison, especially if there's something in that little box that's unique to the person that you've served, giving it to somebody, giving the same thing to all your clients is, is, you know, you know, arguably enough of the leap in client delight that they'll talk about you. But if you, but you take it to another level by, you know, really making it personal, like we talked about. So. Yeah. I send that, I, I put a little handwritten note in there too. So. Okay. Perfect. Excellent. That's what we're talking about. Great, I great comments. Does, but yes, <laughs> Michelle is a uh, a mindset expert. I'll I'll leave the commercial for another time. But she's uh, just brilliant in the work that she does, and um, we've uh, become friends and and colleagues here. So thanks for attending. All Thank right, anything you. else? Anybody else? Yeah, Debbie, Gabby, shoot. So a question I have is, could you expand a little more on the best practices around experience check? Because I think that's an easy one that often gets forgotten. So uh, if we reveal, thank you for the question. If we reveal that uh, the, 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 what the, like I called it the uh, transparent, you know, the, the transparent, predictive trans transparency. If we reveal what transformation looks like, especially in some sort of graphical picture, then it's easy enough to then declare benchmarks in the client journey that are logical places for us to check in. 
how are we doing? You know, by this time we've covered this and that, uh, you know, how's been your, how's your experience been? Is there anything that where you feel like you've, you've gotten lost? Is there anything that you feel like you want to celebrate about? Uh, and let's just do that right now uh, about the progress that you've made. Um, a, a meaningful connected, not like how, how do we, you know, well, let's see, I don't want to say not All, many times, in fact, almost every time, uh, I say something at the end of a coaching call, something along the lines of, so, um, how do we do today? How do you feel? Uh, you feel like you, you've you had a breakthrough today, uh, is, you know, so that's a, a version, but let's take it, let's up the ante a bit by being a little bit more deliberate. Uh, I saw an article, um, where was that? Just the other day, somebody said, we've all heard about exit interviews. What about we have stay interviews with our employees. Mm. <laughs> I thought that was pretty, pretty clever. Uh, I actually and, help my clients with those. Yeah. No, good for you, Debbie. They're fun. Um, and so, yeah, so that's what we're talking about with our client relationship is not just, you know, uh, find out why they left us, but find out what they're loving and, and, and along the way, picking up anything that we can do better, different, or more to just blow them out of the water with delight. All right. Does that help, Debbie? Does that uh, answer your question? Okay, good. Thumbs up. All right. Anybody else before we bring, before we land the plane here? Any other? Please, could yeah, I just ahead. make a couple of comments? Fire away, um, please. Everything that you say, I, I just think, I, honestly, is amazing. I, I love the... Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, I'm you're, just you're surprising and delighting me. Thank you. <laughs> but you made a couple of statements that really, really um, hit deep for me. And one is, I love the statement, none of us is smarter than all of us. Yeah. And I happen to be in the team building business, and I just love the awareness and being able to say that statement. I think it's beautiful. Thanks, and Carol. also, I love your whole concept of we are in the business of transformation. That's awesome also. So just want to say thank you for um, inviting me on. And yeah. um, wow, I just love listening to you. So okay, thank well, you. thank you for that, Carol, and great reinforcement. Um, you know, as, as you as you know, and I'm not uh, tooting my horn here, but what uh, was that old uh, TV show or the old timer used to say, no brag, just fact. All this comes out of not only my experience and assimilation of, um, uh, you know, what works, but man, I learn every day from my clients. I, I, I have a strong philosophy. If, if a person can go to bed at night, lay their head on the pillow and, and not actually uh, consciously pull out something that they learned, they weren't paying attention. And so I just practice paying attention. And so a lot of what you guys are going to get through whether it's these sessions that are obviously complimentary and encouraging uh, you to have your breakthrough for the year. But if we were to work together, uh, you're getting, uh, and, and I trust that this should be for you too, not only your experience, your ideas, your wisdom, but also through the lens of the people that you've served that makes you an even more powerful servant. That is so very important. So pay attention, I guess, would be the <laughs> the. Uh, Thing there. Okay. Any other final shots? Yeah, Steve. Can you open up the file that I put in the chat called Daily, spelt by your last name, Inspiration? I will. Let's see. And what will it show me? It'll show you. Uh, uh, I got it. I, I just requested access. Keep going. Okay. Shucks. Shucks. That's too bad. <laughs> It'll show you. It'll show you an oatmeal raisin cookie with oh, I love it. <laughs> with with, day, with with your last name and the word with mine. Inspiration, daily inspiration with an oatmeal raisin cookie in there. I love it, Mike. That now that's what I'm talking about, right there. Brilliance in work. Good virtual job. cookies, mm, <laughs> nutritious and delicious with no calorie intake. No, no, no <laughs> calories in oatmeal cookies whatsoever. All right. Thank you, Mike. I cherish that. With that, I'm going to call this a wrap.
You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your attendance. I'm glad to hear the very positive remarks about what you've experienced and reach out to me anytime if I can help you implement uh, these things. First step, by the way, would be to go to that five-day uh, five challenge.